October 3rd, 1996, Thursday, 9.06 p.m. That was the exact moment the gauntlet was thrown down. That was the exact moment that an invitation was presented to me that was so devastating, yet so exquisite, that it irrevocably altered the course of my life forever. And that invitation was placed in my arms in the form of my own son. The Down syndrome was apparent immediately and autism about 18 months later. But that first night with my world in a whirlwind and completely on its ear around me, I felt drawn towards the still point that was at the heart of my fear and my chaotic mind. My son was holding me in some kind of immense quiet that was medicine for my reeling soul. And I was so terrified. And I was also in awe. A gift was being offered to me, ready or not. And I was aware of hearing this sound. I heard my son. It was like he whispered to me shortly after he was born. I kept hearing him in a kind of soundless utterance say, trust me. And as I would be caught up in my fear, I would hear him say, trust me. And I did. Taiga is now almost 16. He does not speak. He's considered globally delayed and he requires a lot of assistance and all manner of personal care. So as a single mom, as an older single mom, it's hard. It's full out. It's quite the challenge. It is also an absolutely profound path to walk with such an amazing human being. Because what all I just mentioned to you, so much of the world sees just that. And I am compelled to talk to you because I am inviting you to look with me beyond all of that, because it is my conviction that individuals like Taiga are our most exacting teachers. They will show us where we are. They will challenge our notions of authenticity and inclusion, illusion, acceptance, tolerance, humanity. They upset the rules. They don't do the rules which is why it can be crazy making, but it's something to show us. And they defy the acceptable story and they invite us to re-script us, re-script it and breaking our hearts open in the, in the, in the way they do that and invite us into an adventure beyond the boundaries and beyond the mental boxes of what we think we know. To be true. I have always felt that it's my job just simply to keep up and to listen at the deepest level I can to what he is communicating and to be a translator between his world and the greater world and to keep evolving my notion of what is possible and to ensure that my culture does not disappear these most important citizens. And I always thought that it was so, perhaps my most important job, to build a bridge so that Taiga may find his way to our world and to find a measure of, of com uh, acceptance here even, a part of the human family. And I realized there is a kind of arrogance in that. The bridge needs to be built, absolutely. But it as much needs to be built so that we may find our way to his world, and to the world of that unique tribe to which he belongs because of what they have to illuminate to us about the deepest level of who we are and who our definition of, or what our definition of humanity actually embraces and includes. 
one of the things that I have learned from Ty. And I find it, 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 I'll just share it, is that our common language is one of silence. It is cross species. It runs through all of nature. And it is what connects us, I believe, at the deepest of levels, if we would but quiet our minds long enough, keep them still enough in order to be informed by what lies on the other side of silence. If we can empty ourselves uh, enough and wait in that place so that we may be informed and inspired by something so much vaster and more extraordinary than I would suggest our minds are actually capable of taking us because it is the birthplace of vision, of inspiration, and of all possibility beyond um, what we think it is. I think we can become so caught up in, in our programmed minds and what they can do. And we believe that what we do is then what we can accomplish. And I remember the Dalai Lama at one of the peace summits when asked the question, what would you say to someone who wants to be able to do something for this broken, beleaguered world? And he said very simply, there are only three things, an open heart, loving kindness, and compassion. And he was adamant. He said, it isn't about what you do. If you would attend to those qualities within yourself, the world would begin to change overnight. And I would say to you that individuals like my son who are provocateurs of the human heart, just by walking down the street, they will show you where you are. They will show you your level of acceptance. They will show you your prejudices, your intolerances, your fears. They will show you and illuminate for you the depth of your loving kindness, the openness of your heart, and your compassion. We need these individuals to support us in evolving as a species on this planet. And it is my passion and it is my intention to speak about these things, to write about it, and to join in a conversation with others who are fascinated, intrigued, who want to tease out the teachings, to declare them, to document them, and to share them with the world. The love I live has no language. Its gifts lie somewhere on the other side of silence. And I believe that it is time that those gifts be shared. It is time that these individuals who are so strange, who are so other, step into their place amongst us because I believe they are amongst the bravest of the brave because they are showing us at the deepest level of our humanity who we are. So this journey for me is only 16 years young. I am just beginning and I invite you to join me. It will be extraordinary. Thank you.